Reet then lads and lasses, how we doing and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our match preview as Newcastle United take on Everton at St James's Park tomorrow. And I don't know if it's just me, but it genuinely just feels like we played football yesterday or something. It genuinely feels like we played West Ham 24 hours ago. I don't know if it's because of that late dramatic win or that fantastic game and that fantastic comeback. But it genuinely just feels like we have just played football. But nevertheless, it's Everton at St James's Park. And we've kind of got a little bit of rivalry with Everton, of course. Jordan Pickford, Little Arms, T-Rex Arms, Will Spur most of that up but it's going to be a very very feisty game it looks terrible for Evan at the minute and if I do say so myself ladies and gentlemen it's the most informative match preview yet so stay tuned and of course we've got a lot to speak about with Newcastle United Lewis Hall, Sean Longstaff, Elliot Anderson, Carice and Dubravka and a lot lot more so without further ado let's get into the match preview. So, of course, we'll take a look at both teams, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, information regarding Evan, information regarding Newcastle United, and a lot to speak about with Newcastle. I'll definitely not understate that. But we've also got quite a bit of news with Newcastle United. So, just before we quickly pass through that, like the video if you do enjoy, and of course, subscribe if you are new around here for all Newcastle United content. And of course, you can expect a match day vlog tomorrow. But Newcastle United news, there's quite a bit here. As we do know, Jamal Lassell suffered a very bad injury against West Ham. How on earth he was allowed to play on, I do not know. This medical team really needs sacked I don't know why I'm smiling it's genuinely not a joke maybe because it's April Fool's Day I kind of got a few years on that TikTok video but anyways yes Jamal Lassell suffered a rupture to his right knee of course it was an ACL injury and he's going to be out confirmed by the club for six to nine months not great whatsoever Jamal Lassell has been an unbelievable servant for us of course was it like 4.3 million pounds we picked him up for with Carl Darlow in a kind of duo deal but look he's been an absolutely fantastic servant he's even been great this season when he's need to be uh, called upon of course played against the likes of Paris Saint-Germain he has been unbelievable cover when he's needed to step in for the likes of Sven Botman and kind of playing unusual roles as a left centre-back when Fabian Schaas kind of went up the pitch. He's been unbelievable, so a very speedy recovery, Jamal Lascelles. We've got a few more that Kieran Tripp has kind of rumoured to be back in training there. Of course, that's ahead of tomorrow's game. Now, I'm just going to say now, ladies and gentlemen, that is rumours. That's nothing concrete, so don't believe that too much and not kind of pick up on that too much. Harvey Barnes also says that he's 100% fit for this game. He's been injured quite a few times since coming to Newcastle United, since being on Tyneside. He's been out for a very long time, but he does say he's 100% fit and he's ready to start life at Newcastle United very positively. And lastly, before we get into the match preview and the information regarding Everton and Newcastle United, Anthony Gordon will not play in this game. Now, that's a very, very big sort of downside for me. I wanted Anthony Gordon to come in this game against his old club and actually prove himself and prove to them what they are missing if they can't say it already. He's an England international now and he's tearing life up at St. James's Park in Newcastle United. But... Some people are saying it was deliberate. Look, I don't believe that whatsoever. I think the referee was kind of trigger happy to give out them yellow cards at the end. I don't know what he was doing there. He gave Eddie Howe one for celebrating. I've seen much worse from Mikel Arteta. I will just say that. But yes, Newcastle United will be without Anthony Gordon, which also, uh, with Harvey Barnes putting in a fantastic performance, it may not be that big a miss, but still, Anthony Gordon's been our biggest player this season. He will certainly be a miss. Now, onto the match preview, ladies and gentlemen. Let's finally get into it. All the news out the way. This is how Everton have been this season. And it doesn't look good. But also, I'm saying it doesn't look good. That probably doesn't look good for Newcastle United as well. If they are on bad form, it kind of means Newcastle United are going to slip up. That's just how we work, unfortunately. But yes, Everton are doing seriously, seriously bad. They have not picked up a singular win in their last 12 games. Not only that, but they've picked up seven defeats in that time as well. They are in a very, very tough relegation fight now. Many people are going to be saying, oh, well, they're down and out. They're not going to have any sort of fight in them. Everton Football Club is a very passionate football club. As much as I may not like them, they have got a very good set of fans. They're all passionate about the club. They are very ambitious. So them players are not going to roll over for Newcastle United. They are not going to make it easy. And Newcastle, when we are playing these teams who are kind of down and out, so to speak, I don't want to throw any disrespect on teams, but the likes of Luton, Bournemouth, teams that we should be absolutely battering, they come up and, and sort of pull off a surprise result against were, but Evan genuinely won't go without a fight. There is a little bit of rivalry there. They are going to roll over for Newcastle United and they certainly will make it hard for us at St. James's Park. I do still expect us to get the win though, 100%, which we'll pick up on later in the video. But yes, uh, we have played them once this season and it didn't go too well for Newcastle United. Did it a horrible 3-0 defeat at Goodison Park. Genuinely one of the worst performances of the season. That was in a kind of run of form where we were genuinely absolutely terrible. Our defence was constantly seeding about five a game honestly it was really really poor for Newcastle United that game in itself as well because I thought we'd done okay in the first half and in the second half we completely chucked it in our faces but Evan although we're kind of chucking a lot of disrespect and rightfully uh, some disrespect yeah, they've been genuinely so so poor they've got a lot of players 
who are kind of stand out. They've got a lot of players with very good individual quality. Amadou Anana, who we've been linked with quite a lot of times, Newcastle United have. I definitely wouldn't mind him at Newcastle United. Maybe wouldn't get in the midfield trio of Bruno, Jolin and Antonali, but still, he's a very, very good player. Very good on the ball. Very physical player as well, shall we say. Um, I've seen him live once. That was a Goodison Park, and actually, he didn't play too well there. There was a midfielder, though, which took my liking, which I, uh, I watched at Goodison Park live when we beat them 4-1 at Goodison Park, and that was James Garner. I've never really seen his praise has sort of been sung but he was a very good player for me he was very energetic which could cause our midfield some very very big issues but yes Amadou Anana very good player and one war uh, which we also been kind of linked with very very recently Jared Branthwaite he's an unbelievable centre-back of course he's also an England international now we kind of I wouldn't say you have to watch out for a centre-back but the likes of Alexander Isak if Jared Branthwaite can mark Isak if he can mark about the game we might also but he kind of struggling there as well. Gerald Branthwaite is unbelievable. He's not the best in the air, but he still is a very, very good centre-back. He's proved that he's a left-sided centre-back who also can't play right, but of course he's predominantly left. Uh, very, very good. Alexander Isak does kind of need to watch out there. But on to Newcastle United, where ladies and gentlemen, I really need some opinions on this. So definitely let me know down below because this is a very big discussion. That's what all the match previews are about. So you let me know what your thoughts are on every single point I'm going to pick up here. The first one being Gordon performed absolutely fantastic against uh, basically every single team have played this season apart from the exception of that bad run of form genuinely Gordon has been absolutely fantastic this season but with his suspension he can't play in this game against Everton unfortunately Harvey Barnes was fantastic against West Ham if Harvey Barnes puts in a fantastic performance against Everton does Anthony Gordon, of course, both players are predominantly a left winger. Does Anthony Gordon, no matter the performance of Harvey Barnes, if he scores five goals, does Anthony Gordon come straight back in that team? Now, for me, look, Harvey Barnes, of course, starts in that Everton game. There's no question about that. There's definitely not a left winger who could do more than Harvey Barnes in that game. We've scored two against West Ham and Gordon being uh, unavailable for that game. But in my eyes, Gordon comes straight back into that team. He's deserved it. He's proved it all season long. And of course, he's proved it in an England shirt as well. He hasn't scored yet, but he's done very, very well. And one man for me who hasn't proved it as much because he hasn't been given the chance, but one man for me who must start in this game against Everton Football Club, it's Lewis Hall. I've been singing his praises for such a long time now, and I kind of feel like Eddie Howe is overlooked him now. I don't normally like to chuck out stuff like that about Eddie Howe, but he's also said recently, well, well of course, before the West Ham game where he did perform very, very well and the Manchester City game away where unfortunately we did lose but still when he came on he was very, very good. Eddie Howe said Lewis Hall had to improve defensively or he kind of wasn't impressed with... I think he, he, he said he had to improve defensively. Every time I've watched Lewis Hall his defensive capability has been very, very good. And, of course, his passing has been very neat. Going up the pitch, he's been very, very good. He looks like a breath of fresh air. He's just completely energetic. It's something which we've been lacking. And, of course, with um, the likes of Tina Livermento, who may be injured because he looked in absolute agony uh, against West Ham when he came off. Fingers crossed he's absolutely fine. Kieran Trippier might come back into the equation. But the back four for me, you let me know if you agree, ladies and gentlemen. Right back, if Kieran Trippier and Tino is out, it's got to be Emil Kraft. He's never kind of put a foot wrong this season. I know, again, against West Ham it wasn't his best performance he got bloody subbed on and then got subbed off but he has been okay when he's been subbed on this season uh, or when he's been called upon this season sorry I should say right centre back goes without saying it's Fabian Shaw another one who's been unbelievable what a buy he was left centre back Dan Byrne who actually I've been pretty critical of Dan Byrne in that left centre back role but he didn't do too bad there did he ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen I was going to say lads and lasses there left back for me undoubtedly it's got to be Lewis Hall something needed to change there in that left back position and I do believe Lewis Hall is the answers to all of our problems at left back so much energy going up the pitch he's far better his position and I really like as well he gets himself in some very very good positions and he's got that uh, sort of left wing back role in green in his head but I really do like Lewis Hall I've said it since day one this lad needs a chance now there's two more situations I kind of want to talk about before we wrap up the video ladies and gentlemen and it is kind of who should be starting we did do that with Lewis Hall just there but this one is a very very big one it's actually a pretty competitive one now what should the midfield look like against Everton Football Club for me personally probably for everyone else watching this video as well. It's got to be Bruno J in that midfield. Although, I do say that, he looked very, very tired and very knackered as if he gave it his all as he does in every game. But he looked unbelievably knackered at the end of that West Ham game. Fingers crossed he's okay. We know what Bruno's like. He likes to limp all the time and sort of put us in panic mode. He definitely does that on purpose, by the way. I've picked that up so many times. But in the midfield, in the middle, it's got to be Bruno. On the left, Joel Willock. Although that first half performance from Joel Willock against West Ham, I thought, personally, I haven't seen too many people speak about it, was 
was unbelievably lazy. He wasn't getting into tackles. He wasn't kind of progressing with the ball, which he normally does. That wasn't the Joe Willock we all know and love. Fingers crossed we can get him back against Evan. Of course, he might not even be full fitness. But fingers crossed we could get the old and uh, very, very good Joe Willock back against Evan. And he's got to start on that left-hand side. But right centre midfield is what sparks up this conversation. Is it going to be Eddie Howe's favourite Sean Longstaff? Or is it going to be Elliot Anderson, who I've been very, very critical of Elliot Anderson in the past couple of months, so to speak. I've never kind of rated him whatsoever, but the recent couple of cameos against Blackburn, against West Ham just there, when he's came on, yet again, like Lewis Hall, he looks very energetic. I thought them too, and Harvey Barnes, certainly changed the game against West Ham. But Elliot Anderson, he looks a lot more physical now, and I actually really do rate him. He progresses up the pitch with the ball very, very well. He uses his body on the ball very well. Like I said, I really like the look of Elliot Anderson. And so to speak, I do not like the look of Sean Longstaff. I hate going in on, on Sean Longstaff because I could, I would like to cut him every single bit of slack that I possibly could. He's a jolly lad. He had an absolutely fantastic season last season. Genuinely, if there was anyone I could cut slack for, it would be a jolly lad. But for Sean Longstaff, unfortunately, I can't. And it genuinely gets me infuriated how Eddie Howe said, if you, I can't remember the exact quote, but it was something like, if you don't perform in this team or you're not on form, you come out with a team. That's not been the case with Sean Longstaff. I don't think that lad's put in one fantastic performance this season. Honestly, I think he's put in about 10, 15 bad ones. And I hate to say that about my own player. But when he's playing week in, week out, and he is genuinely the odd one out. Even Dan Burns put in good performances recently. Long Sean Longstaff looks like a bystander. He genuinely does. In that midfield, he's not helping well whatsoever. Going forward with the ball. Defending. Marking. He's marking himself. Honestly, Sean Longstaff in this team right now. I don't want to pick up on it too much. But even against West Ham, our last game, just the easiest one to pick. Our last game against West Ham. He was anonymous yet again. Ellie Anderson has got to have a chance. If he's fit, uh, fully fit, of course, of, he has picked up a very bad injury. He was a bloody broken back or something like that. So if he is fully fit... Ellie Anderson gets in there every day of the week for me. Sean Longstaff, he's got to be dropped with his current form, especially after what Eddie Howe said. Now, the last one to wrap up the video, ladies and gentlemen, who should start? Is it Oris Karius or Martin Dubravka? Now, for me, it's a very weird one. It's a very obscure one because, of course, you shouldn't really be chopping and changing with your goalkeepers. We've seen it with the likes of Arsenal this season, but it's not very common for me against Everton. It's got to be Dubravka. I've got very bad memories of Dubravka against Everton. Of course, we've got that one at Goodison Park this season. We've got that one when Iwobi put it in the 99th minute after that lad ran on the pitch, tied his neck to the bloody goalpost. What a game that was. But look, for me against Everton, it's got to be Dubravka. Although I have yet again, like I said, with... Uh, uh, Pardon me with Ellie Anderson. I've been very critical of Dubravka recently. He's not great for... I don't believe Dubravka has been very great vocally recently. He doesn't know how to command his box when he's going up in the air. He looks very uneasy, so to speak. He doesn't know how to command his box. And yet, like I said, he just doesn't look very great vocally. He's not got that sort of leader aspect. But we all do know the quality of Martin Dubravka in goal. His reflexes has even kind of proved that this season that he is still a very good goalkeeper. Although, rightfully, performed that he has dropped a fair few stinkers as well. He can't sort of emulate that sweeper role. What Nick Pope does, Karius, on the other hand, can certainly emulate that. Now, look, this is Dubravka. For me, he's on very thin ice. This is his last chance. Go out there and have a fantastic performance. If he doesn't, Loris Karius has got to step in. And also, by the way, I've never mentioned this sort of news, but it has been confirmed by Loris Karius's wife that Loris Karius does want to move away from Newcastle United due to not getting any sort of game time. Look, he come here not knowing he was not going to get any game time. I mean, Nick Port was definitely the man in the middle of the sticks. But I think he's kind of getting annoyed that Debravka has put in these performances and he's not getting any game time. To be fair, I would too. So if you did enjoy the video, ladies and gentlemen, hit that like button down below. And of course, my final score prediction, I'm going to go Newcastle United 3, Everton 0. I honestly think we'll blow them away. But I also have it in the back of my head that Evan's going to snatch like a 1-0 last minute win or something like that. We'll go and smash West Ham like we did in that emphatic 4-3 win. And then Everton will go and beat Rats in James's Park. But stay tuned for the match uh, sort of match day vlog that'll come out tomorrow. Sort of? not the match day vlog. What do I mean sort of match day vlog? Honestly, I need to slow down with my speaking. But yes, stay tuned for the match day vlog tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, I've been Jordy Josh. Go and enjoy your day, people.